Hello, it's me, Stephen Yang, again from Relearn to Share. Today, I'll be teaching you about the first IGCSE geography topic, 1.1 Population Dynamics. So let's get right into it. So this is the syllabus information, and Cambridge International suggests that candidates should be able to describe and give reasons for the rapid increase in the world's population, show an understanding of overpopulation and underpopulation, understand the main causes of a change in population size, give reasons for contrasting rates of natural population change, describe and evaluate population policies, and, <clears throat> and I'd like to also delve into the supplementary detail that uh, consists of causes and consequences of overpopulation and underpopulation, how birth rate, death rate, and migration contribute to the population of a country increasing or declining, and the impact of social, economic, and other factors. Uh, on birth and death rates. And in the latter part of the lecture, I'll introduce some case study examples you need for the exam on the paper one seven mark paragraph question. And these are the key terms you need to know. So population is the number of inhabitants of a particular area. An overpopulation is the situation where the number of people in an area is too high to effectively utilize the resources available. So this means that each individual only has access to very little access to limited resources. And underpopulation is the direct opposite of overpopulation. So this is a situation where the number of people in an area is too low to effectively utilize the resources available. So uh, the resources are in excess that uh, not everyone in the population can actually uh, utilize those uh, all of those limited resources effectively. And birth rate is the number of live births per thousand people annually. And death rate is, of course, the opposite. So it's the number of deaths per thousand people annually. And natural increase is the situation when the birth rate exceeds the death rate. And natural decrease is, of course, the situation when it's vice versa. So when the death rate exceeds the birth rate. So why does population change? So uh, what you're seeing here is a demographic transition model, which relates a country's population change based on the change in economic status. So if you follow my cursor, you can see three lines. So we have a yellow line, which is the birth rate, and we have the green line, which is the death rate, and we have the blue line, uh, which is the total population. And to start off with stage one, here is the high stationary period when the country's economy is not developed yet. So therefore, the death rate is uh, very high due to the high infant mortality rate and the lack of advancement in medical technology. So here you have uh, households having many children, but also many deaths with a very low life expectancy. So uh, since the birth rate and the death rate are equal, uh, you have a stationary population. And when we move on to stage two, this is the early expanding period uh, when the death, death rate uh, decreases as there's, there are advancements in medical technology as the country starts to develop, which decreases the infant mortality rate and increases life expectancy. But still, of course, change doesn't happen rapidly. So here we still have the birth rate constant in a high rate. So this, you can see the total population uh, starting to grow here. And in stage three, this is the late expanding period when the birth rate starts to decrease as there's emancipation of women and the cost of living increases since uh, the economy has been developed significantly. And stage four is the low stationary period when the birth rate and death rate are equal, but this time they are all low. And because of that, the population growth starts to curve and uh, starts to become in a stationary position, uh, but the population is much higher than that is in stage one. And in stage one, uh, sorry, and stage five is the declining period when the population starts to decline as the birth rate is lower than the death rate. So the demographic transition model uh, gives you an overview how uh, the population changes as a country develops economically. And here are some other factors that uh, stimulate population change. And many households uh, in less economically developed nations want more children as a workforce to support them. So uh, of course, households have many babies to actually support their family. 
And also there are pro-natalist policies, which is basically pro-birth in nations that uh, need a growing population. And some cultures and religion are also pro-natalists too, that uh, which opposes contraception and considers birth as a blessing. And contraception is uh, the method to actually uh, inhibit uh, pregnancy. And for the factors that actually decrease um, population growth or actually uh, creates a population decline are anti-natalist policies. So one of the anti-natalist policies uh, are is the Chinese one-child policy, which I will talk about later. And of course, there are the use of contraceptive methods and also being unaffordable to raise children. Uh, this actually pertains to the more economically developed countries. And I would like to talk about the consequences of overpopulation and underpopulation, because of course, both having too high of a population or too low of a population have repercussions. So the consequences of overpopulation includes uh, the destruction of the natural environment and habitat of wildlife, along with um, increased pollution. Also, the price of goods will increase since there is increased demand of the, for the same supply, though, which then leads to the increased price of living. Of course, not all people are going to be are going to be able to afford the high price of living. So this is going to be a social problem. And the consequences of underpopulation include a lack of growth in economy and also deflation and the uneven distribution of population that creates uh, difficulty in increasing areas for settlements. So uh, let's say you might have an area that you want to live in, but uh, unfortunately nothing has developed there. So you just live in like just the middle of nowhere. So one example of a population policy is China's one child policy. So it is a, it was an anti-natalist policy, which restricted families to only have one child between 1980 and 2015 for the purpose of curbing the exponential population growth. And well, it did reduce the fertility rate to uh, 1. 1. 1.6 from 2.74 per couple. Uh, well, yeah, then it proved that the policy was effective. But China's population started to age, as I uh, mentioned in the demographic uh, transition model. So as China has economically developed, the life expectancy has increased, but the fertility rate has decreased. So we could say that China uh, is currently in stage four and is in a risk to actually go into stage five, which, which creates a natural decrease. And the problem here is that the number of people in the economically active group, which I will talk about in some other population topics, uh, they will be decreased, but they will have to take care of their parents and elders. So this decline can also lead to the dark future of the country. And another factor that affects population is uh, HIV AIDS. So HIV is a human immunodeficiency virus. So this virus affects the ability of a woman to produce estrogen or progesterone. Oh, well, of course, HIV and AIDS, well, they usually uh, produce, the, the, the main problem of HIV and AIDS is that uh, they literally make the immune system to malfunction, which um, in the past just literally was a signal, was a death, was a death uh, penalty for patients who actually have that. So there was no way to cure. But in this context, uh, this could lead to early menopause, which is the state of being unable to become pregnant naturally. And yes, of course, in the past, um, this has contributed to the increasing of death rates. But in the present day, this virus could be treated as, as a chronic disease like diabetes or high blood pressure. But still, inhibiting women to be pregnant contributes to a lower death rate now, which could lead to a natural decrease. So you have the same death rate, but the birth rate is lower. Uh, that's why the country will move into a natural decrease. And now I'll introduce you to the case studies. The first case study is for an overpopulated country, which is Bangladesh. And uh, as an introduction with place-specific detail, which is very crucial in your seven more questions, 
Bangladesh has a population density of 1,252 people per square kilometers. And the median age is 26, which is very young. And the reason why Bangladesh is overpopulated. So this is because the infant mortality rate is very high due to a bad economy with low GDP per capita of $240 only, uh, which leads to high birth rate because families want more workforce than farms with contraceptive methods being unpopular too, due to the lack of ability and knowledge along with the emancipation of women not achieved yet. So we could say that Bangladesh is still in uh, stages two, which uh, we, <clears throat> stage of one and two, where you have the high birth rate and the emancipation of women has not been achieved yet. And the problems of this overpopulation can be uh, over, over cultivation in the rural areas, which is the overuse of farmlands that lead to taking in of too many nutrients from the soil, then the soil would lose its fertility. And in urban areas, especially, you would have poor living conditions, uh, stress on necessary services, uh, especially in the healthcare, and high population and competition of jobs, which leads to high unemployment. And my second case study that I'd like to introduce to you is for an underpopulated country, which I chose Australia. So the population density is only 2.9 kilom square kilometers of uh, people per square kilometers compared to the 1,252 square people per square kilometers in Bangladesh. And the Australia's economy is really good actually. So it has five, it's ranked in the fifth highest per capita income of $51,420 and along with high exports leading to a high standard of living, which uh, would bring the nation to an underpopulated state. So since there's a high standard of living, the cost of living also increases where family would, so less families will be actually be affordable to uh, raise children. And the problems of this underpopulation can be some shortage of workers leading to a lower productivity in the economy. So there is no guarantee that Australia would actually maintain their strong economy along with their uh, fifth highest per capita income in the future. And we have, we're gonna have less people paying tax as the birth rate decreases, but people in the elderly ranges will increase. And also we will have closings of infrastructures and the underutilization of resources. So e even though you have those great, marvelous, magnificent natural resources, well, the country won't be able to use it because of the underpopulation. So that's why the economy is going to shrink. The next case study is for a country with a high natural increase. So I chose Bangladesh again, since it has a really, really high birth rate of 17.7 and a death rate of 5.53 per 1,000 people. And you can realize that the difference is very significant, 17.7 versus 5.53. And the rate of natural increase is 12.7 per 1,000 people, which is caused by uh, child marriage, lack of contraception, and the pro-natalist culture. And also the higher living standards uh, will inhibit couples from having many children too. And the problems coming from a high natural increase is very similar to the problems of overpopulation. So there will be an uncertain future, there will be an increase in pollution, and of course, high competition for employment. And the last case study I'll be talking about is for a country with a very low natural increase, or I mean, actually we could call this a natural decrease. So South Korea is a prime example of this. So this country has the lowest birth rate among developed nations with only 7.303 children per 1,000 people, but it has a death rate of 5.75 uh, per 1,000 people. Well, of course, the difference between the birth rate and death rate is much closer than, we, than when we compare to Bangladesh. And elders consist of 15% of the population. So that's makes experts predict that the population will reach its apex in 2024, and then the population will constantly decrease. And the emancipation of women in the country is also a very, very huge contributor along with the competitiveness of the society. And of course, many of you will know that South Korea is very, very competitive in education. 
which requires high investment in organization in private institutes called Hagwan. That is, that can be hard to afford for some families. So the consequences of this is that the economy will shrink due to having less workforce along with losing power in the international stage as there are less forces to represent in those international organizations. So since we covered all these case studies required for topic 1.1, uh, I will introduce a seven mark case study question for you guys. So the question is, for a named country you have studied, describe the problems caused by overpopulation. And I would like to advise you to pause the video and brainstorm three develop points with place specific detail. So now I hope you uh, brainstormed your three points and I will show you my example of the response. So this is my brainstorming. So I chose, of course, Bangladesh, uh, which was my case study, and this is my outline. So my first point is that the living conditions are poor. So the cost of living in urban area is high. So people who cannot afford, they live in semi-permanent shanty towns called busties, uh, which lack electricity, sewage, and clean water in the overcrowded atmosphere, which is very vulnerable. Uh, to infective diseases like cholera. And there is high pollution due to uh, more than 4 million vehicles emitting acidic gas compounds like nitrogen oxide or sulfur dioxide uh, in urban regions, which contributes to the formation of acid rain. And high, employ and high unemployment is my third point supported by the reasoning that increased competition for jobs makes unqualified people struggle to maintain their vocation. So the unemployment rate is 5.41%, which is very high due to uh, the low investment and provision of jobs compared to the rocking population. So you all can devise your responses in three paragraphs, one for each point with place-specific detail. So when you need to get the marks, uh, including place-specific detail is very important. And yeah, this is it for my lecture today. And in my next video, I'll be talking about topic 1.2, migration. And I hope you find this lecture very useful. And of course, please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.